Seventh Day and Covenant. The biblical understanding of a covenantal relationship is distinctly different from the modern understanding of a contract. In distinguishing covenant from contract, Han and Petrie explain that whereas a covenant is an exchange of persons in which people commit themselves to one another, a contract entails an exchange of property. The exchanges between people that take place in covenants and contracts entail laws. However, due to the relational dimension of both contracts and covenants, neither is reducible to laws. Covenants and contracts establish relationship between people, which laws then, writes Hamilton, regulate or perpetuate by orderly means. Contracts establish a new business relationship, whereas covenants establish new personal familial relationships. According to the Bible, marriage is to be understood as a covenant, as explained by Han, and not a contract. And the biblical laws associated with marriage are intended to foster and protect this family relationship. When a man and woman marry, they exchange themselves and seal their marriage with an oath to God the Father of all. In so doing, a sacred family relationship and not merely a business relationship is established between the man and woman. In contrast, a contract, such as between a cell phone provider and the customer, entails only a legally binding business commitment between a company and an individual with the understanding that if the individual or company breaks the contract, legal action may be taken, in which the laws of the contract and the state are invoked, not the laws of God. The implied Genesis covenantal relationship between God and all creation means that God on the seventh day entered into a sacred family relationship with everything he created as a loving, imminent, close father and not simply as a distant, transcendent God.